business is the continuation of the debate on motion 4710 in the name of the First Minister on Scotland's choice. I would invite members who wish to speak in the debate to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Nicola Sturgeon. Presiding officer, last week this debate came to a halt in the worst of circumstances. Almost one week on, our thoughts remain with those affected by the London atrocity. It is worth reflecting today perhaps on how we all felt last week. In our shocking sadness, we were reminded of our common humanity and the core values that unite us. And we came together to proclaim our commitment to that more, most cherished principle of all, uh, democracy. Today's debate at its heart is about democracy. It is about the right of people in Scotland to choose our own future. And in itself, it is a demonstration of democracy in action. Elected representatives with different but passionately held views, expressing those differences through robust, sometimes very robust discussion. Ours is a privileged position and we all have a responsibility to rise to it. It is the example we set here in this chamber that many others across our country will follow. So let us make sure it is the right one. Let us recognise and accept that we are all sincere in the opinions that we hold. Let us always remind ourselves that the person on the other side of the debate is not an enemy, simply someone with a different but still a valid point of view. None of us come to this debate with anything other than the best of intentions and the best of motivations. Uh, we all want the best for Scotland. So let us today, as we resume this debate, heed the words of the Church of Scotland when it tells us that there is nothing inevitable about this debate or any other debate being divisive. That depends on how we choose to conduct it, not just today, but in the months that lie ahead. Uh, the Church called for a debate which informs and inspires, not one which derides and dismisses. That should, presiding officer, be the ambition of all of us. Uh, my resolve in seeking to lead by example is to conduct myself in a spirit of openness, honesty, respect and understanding. And I hope that others right across the chamber will join me in that. Presiding officer, it's not my intention uh, to rehearse all of the arguments I made in opening this debate last week, which will uh, relieve uh, people on all sides, I am sure. Uh, there are, however, two points I do want to make today. Uh, firstly, I want to remind us why this debate matters, why the debate we are having today is important. Scotland, like the rest of the UK, stands at a crossroads. When Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty is triggered tomorrow, change for our country at that point becomes inevitable. Uh, we don't yet know the precise nature of that change. Much will, of course, depend on the outcome of the negotiation that lies ahead. But we do know that the change will be significant and profound. It is change that will impact on our economy, not just in the here and now, but for the long term. Indeed, it was the UK Treasury ahead of the referendum last year that said Brexit would make the UK permanently poorer. There will be an impact on trade, on investment and on living standards, and an impact on the very nature of the society we live in. Much that we have come to take for granted over certainly most of my lifetime, the freedom, just as one example, to travel easily across Europe, is now up for negotiation with outcomes that are at this point deeply uncertain. And my argument is simply this. When the nature of the change that is made inevitable by Brexit becomes clear, that change should not be imposed upon us. We should have the right to decide the nature of that change. The people of Scotland should have the right to choose between Brexit, possibly a very hard Brexit, or becoming an independent country, able to chart our own course and create a true partnership of equals across these islands. And if we accept, as I hope we all do, that Scotland does have the right to decide our own future, the question then becomes one of timing. When is it best to make that choice? We are all agreed that now is not the time. In my view, the time to choose is when the terms of Brexit are clear and can be judged then against the challenges and the opportunities of becoming an independent country. The Prime Minister was clear with me yesterday that she intends the terms of Brexit, both the exit terms and the UK's future relationship with the EU, 
to be known before the UK leaves and in time for ratification by other EU countries. In other words, sometime between the autumn of next year and the spring of 2019. Yes. Louise MacDonald. Grateful, and, and I hear what she says about the Prime Minister's view. Is that her view? Has her government done an assessment of when a future trading relationship between the UK and the EU might be completed? First Minister. I can only, I've made this point before. I can only go at the moment on what the Prime Minister, who is leading these negotiations on the UK side, is saying about her intentions. I made very clear uh, when I announced my own intentions about a referendum that if that timetable changes, for example, if the two years was to be extended, then that would have an impact on the timetable that Parliament is discussing today. But right now, we, none of us can know that. We can only base our decisions on the timetable set out by the Prime Minister. And the Prime Minister yesterday was very clear with me about our intentions in that respect. I, for my part, am equally clear about the responsibility I have to ensure that the detail of independence is set out well in advance so that the people of Scotland can make a truly informed choice. To enable that choice, the Scottish and the UK governments require to make certain preparations now, which leads me finally to the question of how I intend to respond should Parliament pass the motion later this afternoon. It's not my intention to do so confrontationally, Instead, I only seek sensible discussion in recognition of the importance and the significance of what will happen tomorrow. I will not do so until later this week after the triggering of Article 50. Uh, yesterday, I wished the PM well for both tomorrow and the negotiations that lie ahead. And I assured her, as I assure the Chamber today, that the Scottish Government will play as full and constructive a role as she is willing to allow. Let me be clear. I want the UK to get a good deal from these negotiations because whatever path Scotland chooses to take in the future, that is in our interests. I simply want Scotland to have a choice when the time is right. So I hope that the UK government will respect the will of this parliament. If it does so, I will enter discussion in good faith and with a willingness to compromise. However, if it chooses not to do so, I will return to the parliament following the Easter recess to set out the steps that the Scottish Government will take to progress the will of Parliament. Presiding officer, when the Prime Minister formally starts the process of leaving the European Union tomorrow, none of us should be in any doubt about what is at stake. The next two years will determine what kind of country we are going to be. The European Commission, the European Parliament, 28 governments informed by their national parliaments will all have a say. The people of Scotland must also have their say. Scotland's future should be in Scotland's hands. That is what this debate is about, the future of our country, how we best harness our potential as a country and overcome the challenges that we face. It is a debate that should engage all of us, whatever our views. So let us start today or restart today as we mean to go on positively, passionately and respectfully. I commend the motion.